uh, I would like to uh, to say uh, thank you for the organizers uh, of this uh, colloquium and uh, my uh, presentation entitled uh, uh, on the representation of the Fidayin in contemporary Arab cinema and uh, fiction uh, is mainly uh, a paper or uh, present representation of the uh, this dilemma <coughs> concerning the uh, this uh, term uh, Fidayin uh, mainly in Arab in contemporary Arab cinema and uh, fiction but before uh, starting uh, the analysis of this uh, uh, term uh, and uh, drawing, in fact, uh, the, the uh, uh, comparative study between the, uh, the movie uh, and uh, the novel, I would like to start with uh, uh, citing some characteristics of contemporary Arab uh, cinema and fiction. In fact, uh, tracing back this uh, uh, the, into the history of cinema and fiction, uh, the themes discussed in early Arab uh, literary uh, uh, and cinematic works were, uh, by and large, true prosaic and uh, thus enabled to convey the true experience of Arabs. Um, maybe um, Egyptian movies and to a lesser de uh, degree uh, fiction, as the representative of Arab uh, cinema was preoccupied with day-to-day -day issues and themes mainly of love and betrayal to occupy the Arabic or the Arab artistic scene for the decades. Uh, instances of, uh, uh, of the, these works are The Iron Door uh, in 1958 by Yusuf Shaheen, uh, the Egyptian uh, famous uh, film director, Dua al Karawan or The Nightingale's Prayer, 1959, adapted from Hassin's novel uh, with the same title are types of the works uh, made famous at the time. In addition, Western movies about the Arabs again added to this limitedness in, term, uh, in terms of themes and form. Examples can be given. Uh, are you hearing me? Can you hear me? Yes? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yes, examples again can be uh, given of the uh, Sheikh uh, in 1921 by George Melford and Arabian Nights 1942 by John Rawlings. Yet one can um, uh, one can sense a gradual departure from personal histories to more inclusive treatment of reality, starting from the 16 or the 60s onward. The wars for liberation in the Arab world mainly inspired many authors and directors uh, in an attempt to correct the stereotypical image about the Arabs uh, as rich, playful, violent, and mindless people, uh, at least if we consider that the, the word Arab is an umbrella word for larger sections of people living in the Arab territory. With the end of the century, therefore, literature and cinema started to produce works that celebrate the men and women who sacrificed for the freedom of their countries. Uh, films like uh, La Bataille d'Alger uh, can be given in 1966, uh, can be given as an example. Starting from the uh, 21st century, themes of national identity, life and diaspora, life in the diaspora and nostalgia, freedom of expression and women's social roles are the prevailing uh, themes. Perhaps Joseph Andras' uh, Tomorrow they, uh, they Won't Dare to Murder Us in uh, 2021 uh, can be considered as one of the latest novels uh, adapted into a film discussing all of these themes together, but mainly the image of the Fidayin in the Arab and Western world. Uh, relying on the real story of the French uh, Fidayi, Fernand Everton, uh, who is uh, uh, standing against the French colonialism to Algeria and who is considered the only French executed by a guillotine, uh, though the bomb was defused. The same dilemma is uh, raised in the attack and uh, uh, the attack 
uh, and uh, La Tonta uh, uh, that are subject of the investigation in this presentation. Um, first of all, if we uh, uh, try to understand this uh, term, in fact, uh, little reference to the term in uh, many dictionaries, but um, for the, the, the according to the Encyclopedia Britannica under the Islamic uh, culture section, so it's a word or a term that is associated with Islamic culture, the fidayin is the plural noun of fidayi, uh, uh, that is a term used in Islamic culture to describe a devotee or of a religious or a national group willing to engage in self-emulation to attain a group goal. Okay, the term first appeared in the uh, 11th and 13th, uh, 13th centuries in reference to the members of the Nizari Ismaili sect of assassins uh, in Iran who would risk their lives to commit, commit political murder uh, in order to satisfy uh, their uh, uh, fact, uh, rulers. Uh, but later on, it is associated with many uh, countries' uh, uh, sacrifices, like in Egypt, uh, in Syria, Lebanon, and but uh, in uh, in Iraq again, uh, with the section of the Saddam Hussein Fidayin, and um, but more importantly, to the Palestinians' uh, uh, jihadists in a way. So, uh, in fact, the, the, as you can see on the slide, uh, these are the uh, pictures of the uh, Ziad Dweri, uh, the filmmaker, uh, Lebanese filmmaker, and uh, Yasmina Khadra, the Algerian novelist. Uh, we want just to uh, shed light on both uh, artists, if you can call them so, as uh, uh, as uh, degaged, uh, uh, so it's a word uh, uh, we can derive mainly from French, and in fact, it, its equivalent in English can be say, say uh, uh, literature of release uh, or release uh, literature. Uh, uh, we will uh, we will uh, explain the the concept later on. For uh, Ziad Dueri and uh, Yasmina Khadra are uh, mainly considered as uh, committed uh, artists. Uh, uh, Zia Dweri is a Lebanese filmmaker. Sorry to interrupt you, Karima. Uh, you're sharing your screen or some pictures because we can't see that. We only see your video of yourself. Okay, just a minute. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you and we can also see the screen. Okay, thank you. Um, for the, uh, the first uh, picture uh, is uh, of the, the filmmaker, the uh, Zia Dueri, is a Lebanese filmmaker who left Lebanon at the age of 20 during the civil war to go study in the United States and uh, graduated in uh, 86 uh, with a degree in cinema. He wrote scripts and directed many award uh, winning like West Beirut in 1998 and uh, Lila Says in 2004. As for uh, Yasmina Kadra, who is the pen name uh, of the Algerian author and ex uh, army officer Mohamed Boulouskoul, in fact, the, his name is um, a female uh, pseudonym uh, uh, be, who belongs to his wife and was adopted in 1997 as a reaction to an army uh, requirement that he submits his manuscripts to a censorship committee. Um, in fact, while uh, many uh, critics see that both, uh, both writers uh, both artists, uh, sorry, are uh, uh, committed uh, for a given uh, cause. Uh, uh, in this presentation, 
I argue that um, through uh, the, the analysis of the, the, the book uh, or the novel of uh, Khadra and the adapted uh, film of uh, Dwayri, that I see that they are far from uh, being committed, uh, but I don't say that they are non-committed writers, but they are in somehow in, uh, uh, in, in between. Uh, that is uh, a term is, is widely used in uh, uh, French uh, literary criticism, that is the dégagement, de uh, uh, that is uh, as if they are releasing themselves from a given responsibility uh, to stand for one, one side. As for the, uh, the book and uh, the, this, uh, this is the cover page of the, of the novel, and here is the, uh, uh, the portrait uh, uh, of, the, of the film. Uh, so here I put uh, film versus novel because of course uh, the novel uh, is not, uh, or the film is not like the novel. There are some changes and the focus uh, will uh, again uh, will, will be different from uh, uh, the focus or the main uh, theme in in the novel. Uh, so the the novel uh, the La Tonta originally in French and uh, translated by John Cullen into English as the Attack uh, in 2006 is uh, Khadra's second novel uh, in the trilogy, including The Swallows of Kabul in 2002 and The Sirens of Baghdad in 2006, presented as a stream of consciousness narrative and by drawing on a female Arab-Israeli perspective, the novel adopts a female character that sacrifices life, love and family for the country's freedom. So here, uh, it is somehow innovative uh, in a way. Uh, the fidai or the, the one who sacrificed himself is a, a woman. Okay, so uh, maybe you have all uh, we have all uh, witnessed the the current uh, bombing in uh, uh, in Istanbul uh, with the the perpetrator is uh, strangely uh, uh, a woman. Uh, we wonder about the we know that there is something um, behind, uh, but we wanted to analyze the vision of art uh, toward those uh, uh, those choices in a way uh, the choice to for self sacrifice mm, uh, for a given cause we don't know about the the drives in fact for for the theme uh, the film sorry it opens differently from uh, the novel with a suicide bombing in tel aviv cafe in a catalyst for the plot of the attack a new film by the Lebanese filmmaker uh, Dwayri. The deadly attack upends the life of Amin, who is the protagonist, uh, uh, who is a well-respected Israeli uh, uh, Palestinian surgeon who until then has led a fully assimilated life in the Israeli capital. Evidence leads to the police to conclude that the person responsible for the violent act is in fact Amin's wife, see him uh, who also perished in the explosion uh, as for the aims of the study uh, the target is to uh, mainly to examine or to study the relationship between cinema and fiction uh, as far as this theme is concerned examine the ways in which the arab cinema and fiction converge and diverge in representing this uh, the image of the fidayin and identify the formal intersections between the novel and the movie that can help in getting a clear image about the term and about Khadra and Dwayri's uh, ideologies. The, the problem, statement of the problem or the problematic uh, is that uh, contrary to, it needs time in fact to have some uh, literature review of the, of the the issue, eh? but uh, here come the majority of critics eh? uh, advocate that the commitment of Khadra and uh, Dwayri uh, uh, to the same cause eh, is the prevailing uh, uh, concern for the majority of critics. But however, uh, or however, we think that both men show rather 
a literary release, at least in that neither, neither of them take a side, uh, as far, uh, at least in these uh, two works. Uh, according to uh, Dominique Garand in her article, uh, que peut la, la fiction uh, uh, in French, uh, in other words, what can fiction do uh, in such cases? Uh, uh, what can fiction do? Yasmina Fadra, the terrorism and the conflict uh, between Israel and Palestine. He said, in the face of the imperatives imposed by conflict in binary systems, Fadra would rather advocate release a notion that better reflects its position uh, than that of non-commitment, even if critical. But being released does not mean losing responsibility or turn your back on the prospect of choice. On the contrary, it is knowing how to deal with troubling issues that undermine communities without being completely absorbed by the powers that would offer resolution in an authoritarian and sacrificial form. The refusal of sacrificial is a form of commitment whose uh, is, uh, what is that is necessary to be able to trace the modalities. Uh, similarly, uh, when asked in an interview uh, by the, uh, the French embassy in the USA, the movie uh, or uh, the question is uh, the movie tackles the question of what home is. So this is the main uh, uh, the main target, and uh, we know in literature home means many things. Huh? Uh, Dewey replied, "I don't have a home right now. I lived in Beirut, Los Angeles, and Paris. I cannot commit myself to any culture." Uh, I can stand from this uh, uh, statement that this can be a reference to the dilemma prevailing the political literature and cinema in the Arab world. Uh, so this in-betweenness is, uh, in, is uh, can be understood from this uh, or from the way his statement. As far as Hadra is concerned, the declaration that women invented resistance, so this is a quote I'm using from the original uh, novel, uh, Les hommes ont inventé la guerre, la femme a inventé la résistance, uh, men have invented the war, while the women have invented, the women have invented resistance. Uh, so uh, if we can read between the lines here, uh, in a way we can even sense that Hadra is siding uh, the Fidai uh, uh, Siham, uh, who is the or who originated the bombing in the both in the, the film and in the movie. Uh, uh, for the me methodology, I uh, I try to draw a, a short comparative study uh, in terms of form and uh, theme starting with the setting, the technique, uh, uh, stream of consciousness, mainly in the novel, but the polyphony in the, in the film. Uh, so in the, in the film, uh, the use of multi-voice uh, narration um, by the, the many characters, the many actors in the film, but here the stream of consciousness of the, uh, the unnamed narrator in the, in the novel. Uh, characters and actors, there are also some formative, uh, uh, formative uh, changes uh, uh, from the novel to the film, and of course the this uh, um, binary uh, opposition between the visual and the verbal signs, mainly of the film and the the novel. Uh, so as far as the setting is concerned, uh, so it's the same setting. It's the Bethlehem, uh, Bethlehem in Palestine, uh, that is the setting of both Hadras and Dewey's uh, works. Uh, we always, as it is the, the, the place, mm, the place is always uh, symbolic in literature, it's a symbolic of rebirth, eh? symbolic of rebirth, because it is uh, no, um, no other than Christ's uh, birthplace. Uh, but at the same time, uh, while Khadra makes an illusion or an allusion to the place as an Islamic land of martyrs, Dewey stands with Amin's secular belief that nothing justifies violence. So here, um, uh, Amin, or the protagonist of the of the book and the the, the novel, uh, the film at the same time, uh, was in fact 
uh, looking uh, for the, the origin or the causes that led his wife to hide the reality from him and to uh, be uh, 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 a, fidei, a fidei by the end. So here, neither, according to um, Amin and to Dewey again, neither religion or patriotism, according to uh, both men, can lead to self-sacrifice. This idea also is, in fact, endorsed by many Western critics who wonder how many uh, Fidein believe that, uh, I quote, after death, they will be rewarded with a martyr's reputation in order to inspire others and some of the faithful uh, ones believe that jihadists go to paradise. Um, uh, again, as a sign of cinematic uh, release uh, or degagement, Duery speaks of his interest in the secular while playing with colors. So the use of colors in the, in the, in the film is so significant. He said, I wanted to show Amin as a man of science. Uh, so he is a doctor and lives in a very modern town. So the white colors prevailed, uh, the first scenes uh, uh, of the hospital, etc. Uh, that is also the white, the symbolism of the colors, the white color that is both uh, a reference to death, to peace, uh, etc. Uh, uh, intermingled together. Tel Aviv doesn't really look like this. There is also a trashy part, mm -hmm. but we picked the high angle views and the big structures to make it look very sophisticated. When Amin goes to Nablus in Palestine, so it's the, the Arab uh, or the Palestinian uh, part of, uh, uh, of the land, we wanted to show the contrast since he is going back to his past, his roots. For Tel Aviv, we added a greenish tint to show his, uh, its coldness and the Western quality it possesses. But whereas for, uh, for the Nablus in Palestine, we worked with warmer colors to show how Arabs are said to be warm and chaotic. Uh, this is the, the words um, of uh, Dewey concerning the, the use of colors in his uh, movie. Um, again, uh, we understand that the journey he had uh, in the or the journey he, I mean, undergoes uh, in uh, Bethlehem in Palestine uh, is a journey, in fact, a physical journey and a psychological one. Uh, so uh, it's very symbolic. Uh, so in fact, it's a quest for a self tracing the personal history of Siham and through her, the national history of every Palestinian, okay? In terms of time, uh, there is also a juxtaposition between a time, the present time of globalization, of multiculturalism, uh, but at the same time, uh, tracing back for the, to the far uh, past of the sacred land, yet the ideas, it's, that is to say that the ideas of sacrifice for liberation is an everlasting topic mm, that we can, uh, that started, uh, as we can see, at least with the, the, the emergence of the term in the 11th and the 13th uh, centuries, Till nowadays, till the recent days, uh, a bombing with a female uh, 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 agent. Um, as far as uh, the technique is concerned, uh, we have said that uh, stream of consciousness uh, prevails the novel, whereas the poly polyphony uh, provides, in fact, uh, I see that uh, this technique of the polyphony uh, provides more freedom. Uh, more freedom to. Uh, sorry. Provides more uh, freedom to uh, Duery uh, to uh, realize his degagement or uh, literary uh, release than to Hadra's narrator. So many narrators versus, versus the first person narrator uh, that is omniscient in Hadra's uh, novel. Uh, for the characters, and actors, what is, uh, what is uh, interesting in this change uh, in the characters, first of all, um, Dewey selected uh, an Israeli cast for his movie, okay? Um, well, the question is, uh, was he obliged, uh, uh, since maybe it's, this is faithfulness to the original text, 
but this does this is does not in fact uh, oblige him to select Israeli actors for the film at the time that Hadra found more freedom to do so in the novel. So Hadra in the novel writing uh, case selecting uh, characters who are uh, Israeli characters, uh, and for the way he selected again uh, 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 an Israeli cast for uh, for his uh, film, uh, especially the the Siham, uh, the the Fidai, who is uh, uh, an Israeli uh, actress. Uh, so the problem is that at the, at the risk of losing audience in the Arab world and especially in Lebanon. Uh, uh, Duery disregards um, disregards his uh, uh, the proposition of Tom Hanks uh, because Tom Hanks was proposed to uh, act in the film. He said he is not Arab and so he is not suitable. But why the Israeli? Uh, and indeed, uh, the film was banned in Lebanon and the, the Middle East and even in the major majority of the Arab. Uh, 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 countries and I had the I was lucky to see it in Paris in 2018, but it is banned in most uh, Arab countries and uh, Muslim uh, Islamic countries. Uh, uh, according to uh, Duwari, uh, uh, in fact, Duwari insists that the original story from the Algerian author was very compelling. He changed some things. Uh, he said, we changed some things. The book features a lot of personal thoughts in the first person, especially from Amin, the main character with his view of the world, his past. We wondered if we should put a voice over in the film, but in the end, we tried to put enough drama in the scenes to allow the spectators to be with this guy for every single scene. Of course, when you make a movie, you always lose something. For instance, the passages when Amin talks about his past, his idealism, the way he was raised, but you also gain something. Uh, end of the quote. In fact, the, the other things, the way things he uh, gains is the writing and the betterment of the image of the, uh, the West uh, or the, uh, the image the West uh, have uh, about Muslims. He said, everybody, thinks that everything that happens in the Middle East is because of crazy Muslims. No one talks about the fact that the Christians are also part of the struggle. Because Siham, uh, Siham originally in the in Khadra's novel uh, was a Muslim. And the, when she died, she was buried in a Muslim cemetery. But in the movie, uh, the Siham is a Christian, uh, a Christian uh, in uh, Duwari's uh, movie uh, with uh, the actress to be an Israeli actress. Uh, so this is the change. Uh, this is the modification in the in the in the film. Uh, finally, the visual and the verbal. Uh, in fact, of course, the film that takes one hour for forty five minutes uh, um, will not, of course, the de de make uh, detailed uh, every uh, two two hundred forty five pages of the novel, as Dewey said. Reading a book is different from watching a movie. With a book, you have more freedom to float. The reader can pause and think about what they just read. In a film, you have an hour and a half or two hours, and it has to flow. So you have to modify, get rid of some of the great stuff. This is a normal process of adapting a book. In fact, the author, the first time we showed him the film, he was pretty upset because we changed his ending. It took him about three, four screenings in, uh, to actually get an understanding. Uh, what I uh, see, in fact, is that the audience uh, sympathize with Siham or with the Siham of the book better than the one of the movie. The way Dwery inserts her words to Amin about loving him uh, in the most delicate situations of his quest for reality is much provocative. Uh, especially with her gestures and laughter. Yeah, that's what we cannot uh, see uh, through the, the novel. Uh, so in the movie, all uh, as if she is lying, uh, all uh, describing all her feelings uh, and faithfulness to her husband uh, while he was upset and looking into, for the reality. Um, as Dewey again said uh, in an interview in the book, Amin's wife is described as naive. Yasmina Khadra is an idealist. He believes women are untouchable angels 
but I think that they are twisted and manipulative as men. Argued, I argued with him about that. Women who commit suicide bombings cannot be that nice. We tried to create a profile for Amin's wife with a lot of different explanations which are not in the book. We also changed the end of the story after the first screening, Hadra was very upset. It took him three screenings to adjust to it, but now he loves the movie. Uh, again, what is uh, remarkable is that uh, in this um, uh, movie poster, in the movie poster, as you can see, Siham's uh, picture is hidden, hmm? is hidden. Uh, one can explain this uh, uh, semiotically uh, or even uh, hermeneutically uh, in various ways, but um, mainly it's symbolic uh, in perhaps uh, the, the image of Sihan is um, buried in darkness, huh? the darkness surrounding the image of the Fidayin in general. A scene from the film that is absent again in the novel is that prior to the attack, Amin misses a call from Sihan that is apparently the last opportunity, his last opportunity to hear her voice and maybe even her drives about knowing about her drives uh, 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 behind committing suicide uh, as uh, in a general terms. Um, in fact, uh, this uh, movie can be reminiscent again uh, about, or the image of Sihan can be uh, reminiscent of the, of the, the movie um, uh, of 1966, uh, Guillaume Ponticorvo, uh, Guillaume Ponticorvo's movie uh, La Bataille d'Alger, uh, where the women uh, bombers, uh, uh, in fact, uh, we are uh, manipulated by the narrator, by, by the narrator uh, in the movie, in a way to disregard the existence of, say, innocent parties in the cafe where the bomb is planted. So similarly, I can. Uh, you can see the same uh, image in both movies. We, we totally forget about the victims, uh, the victims of the bomb, and we concentrate and we focus on the love story of Amin and uh, and Siham and the, the, the personal history of both uh, characters. So uh, we disregard the innocent parties uh, completely. Uh, similarly, Dewey's focus is on the love story and the personal tragedy, tragedy of Amin's inability to understand the real reasons behind Siham's suicide backgrounds, the more important national issue of resistance, his own responsibility as an ex, an ex Palestinian, and the reality of the Israeli, Israeli who turned their back on him, despite of all his attempts to save the injured people with the simple doubt that this, his wife is the Fidei. Um, uh, for the results, the general results, um, the, uh, the literary release of Hadra uh, displaces the representation of the terrorists he literally knew during the Algerian interior war of the 1990s to areas of contemporary conflict that everyone knows about. Um, in fact, again, uh, um, this uh, literary uh, release is embodied again in uh, escaping the main problem of uh, the exploration of the hidden psychological motives that may drive individuals to, jo to join extremist groups, stressing instead the postmodern quest of individuals for truth that does not exist. Um, uh, the release again can be explained that by the pressures during the period when Hadra's literary works were controlled by the military, and uh, to uh, Dewey, again, uh, the same uh, thing. I consider that this is rather a dual focus on the perpetrator of the violence and victim, as it is hard to decide who is who in the context. Can see him, for instance, can be seen as both a victim and a villain in the same time for Amir, uh, for Amin, 
because I mean, also, also is uh, uh, betraying his compatriots. He is in itself a form of release. There is no clear decision uh, who is the victim, who and who is the fidai, and if the fidayin are. Uh, Uh, as a conclusion, uh, since the attack, Hadra continued to write successful international fiction, such as the Syrians of Baghdad and the Equation uh, or uh, the in Equation African and Khalil. Some for the same thing for Dewey, his new movie, Case Number Twenty Three or the insult in 2017 gained important audience. What is remarkable, however, is that both men would return to the same national issues um, with Hadra to his country's colonial past to explore with friendly eyes uh, uh, that I find uh, suitable to describe their uh, ideology, uh, the period of French domination uh, and Dewey's peaceful, again, peaceful tackling and humanitarian tackling, tackling in foreign affairs, the Israeli-Palestinian dilemma. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, uh, your questions are welcome again. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Karima, for the presentation. It was uh, a nice view for us as Europeans into the situation at your place, which you are more familiar with. Uh, unfortunately, um, I'm sorry also for the complications at the beginning of the session. And uh, due to this fact, as I don't want to limit our next presenter too much, uh, we won't have a discussion session now, uh, but I invite everyone who is interested to comment on the video once we upload it on our YouTube channel. So now we are